Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India project on econometric modeling. Today, we will continue the topic bivariate econometric modeling. So, in the last class, we have discussed detail about the structure of bivariate econometric modeling. So, the starting point of bivariate econometric modeling is that we must have two variables in the systems. Okay, let me highlight uh, briefly what, it, what was our last discussions. So, for, uh, uh, for two variables x and y, then the bivariate models is represented as y equal to alpha plus beta x plus u. Okay. So, this is the basic format of bivariate econometric modeling. So, there are three ways we, uh, we can represent this particular structures and that, that is with respect to various data types. So, we, we have three different data setup. One is cross sectional analysis second time series analysis, then panel data analysis. So, panel data is the combination of cross sectional analysis and time series analysis. So, now for briefly, if you will go by three different structures with respect to this bivariate econometry modeling, then obviously, the three way representation is like this y i equal to alpha plus beta x i plus u i. This is cross sectional modeling then similarly y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t this is time series modeling and y i t equal to alpha plus beta x i t plus u i t is panel data modeling. Okay. So, now we are not in a position to discuss all these things simultaneously. So, we start with a basic a framework of bivariate modeling that took cross sectional analysis only. So, now for cross sectional analysis either we can represent the simple models like y equal to alpha plus beta x plus u or you can write y i equal to alpha plus beta x i plus u i. Okay. So, now you, you make a look here the entire structure of bivariate econometric modeling is represented here. So, this particular uh, uh, structures uh, is divided into three parts one is intercept that is what we call it alpha, this is intercept and this is slope and this is residuals or error terms, error terms. Okay. So, now here the idea is that, so we have y equal to y 1, y 2 up to y n all right. So, x equal to x 1 x 2 up to x n all right and u equal to u 1 u 2 up to u n all right. So, now we have discussed the detail constraints of this particular bivariate econometry modeling in the last class. So, now here we are assuming that there are n number of observations and one of the interesting point of this bivariate econometry modeling is that both the variables must have same number of observations. If there is a any <coughs> shortcomings, then obviously, bivariate modeling cannot be fitted. So, we are assuming that there are n number of observations and that two y, y variables and x variables and corresponding to u variables. Here, y is dependent variables, x is independent variables and u is the error terms which is usually not captured, but uh, means the variable which is not captured in the system will be represented in the form of u. So, now we are we, we are assuming that there will be a estimated model. So, y equal to y head equal to alpha plus alpha head plus beta head x. Okay. So, let us assume that this is the estimated model. So, this is the estimated models this is the estimated models. 
So, put in other way uh, in uh, uh, other different way. So, our starting point is y equal to alpha plus beta x plus u. So, this is two regression lines. So, we let us assume that let us assume that y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Okay. So, now obviously y equal to y head plus e. Okay. That implies e equal to y minus y head. So, what is this particular structure? So, now let us see here. So, this is the entire set of here. This is x, x series and this is y series and this particular component is called as alpha. So, our movement of y head is like this. So, here is y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. So, now there are certain original points here. So, this is the estimated line. So, the uh, origin uh, true, true points are like this. So, the difference will be like this here. Okay, so, we have the difference like this. All right. So, now this is E 1, this is E 2, this is E 3, this is E 4, this is E 5 like this. So, now this E represented as the error term. So, that means, uh, uh, when we fitted a line, then obviously, the, uh, that is a, you know different from the true points. So, the true point and the estimated line, so it will give you or it will give the signal of error terms. So, now if you will really further uh, uh, elaborate this particular uh, equation, then obviously, E equal to y minus y head, y head is here, uh, y head minus alpha, uh, sorry, y minus uh, y head. So, that is alpha head minus beta head x. Okay. So, E equal to y minus alpha head minus beta head x. So, here we have two objectives. So, here we have we have two specific objectives. We have two specific objectives. What is this objectives? The first objective is to get the alpha head and what is the actual value of alpha head and what is beta heads. Okay? And second objective is to find out the error components. Okay? So, the, uh, we have now uh, you know when we got the estimated you know equations and through which we have to get the error component, then our uh, objective is very simple. So, we like to know what is the exact value of alpha head and what is the exact value of beta head and through the help of alpha head and beta head, we get to know the error component or we have to evaluate the error term through the help of alpha head and beta heads. So, now how do we go for that? So, uh, since error uh, uh, error is a residual term and which is you know not supporting to the dependent variables exactly. So, uh, our objective must be to minimize that error component. So, that means, uh, we, we must you know represent a model where every variable should be identified means most of the variables should be explain the dependent variables. If a you know that percentage is very less then the model accuracy will be you can say very least. So, we have to prepare ourselves or we have to fit the model in such a way that most of the relevant variable must be included in the system. So, accordingly we have to design our uh, structures or you can say systems. So, now the entire structure is a, 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 a nothing but E equal to y minus alpha head minus beta head x and uh, our objective is to get the alpha head and to get the beta head and with the help of alpha head and beta head, we have to observe the E components. Let us see how we have to observe this one. So, now E equal to y minus y head. So, this is nothing but y minus alpha head minus beta head x. So, summation some uh, so, uh, so, here to get alpha head and beta head x. So, we have to minimize the error term. So, we have to we have to minimize minimize the error term error term. The way we have to minimize the error term, then obviously, we will get the best value of alpha head and best value of beta head. So, how do we go for that? Okay. So, now there are uh, there are several methods through which we have to minimize the errors. So, there are methods like you know uh, some of the methods like ordinary least square method, generalized least square methods, weighted least square methods, maximum likelihood estimators, uh, maximum likelihood estimates like this. So, many methods are there uh, where we can minimize the error sum. So, now 
uh, it is not possible to go each method uh, uh, simultaneously. So, we will take a, a particular method then through which we have to minimize the error sum. Okay. So, now the easiest method for this is called as a ordinary least square methods and popularly known, known as OLS techniques. So, what is all about this OLS techniques? The OLS techniques objective is to minimize the error sum squares. So, now our objective or agenda is to calculate what is error sum. So, now E is, e is nothing but errors. So, which is equal to y minus alpha head minus beta head x. So, now we have to calculate what is the error sum square. So, that means sum of the error sum square. So, that means summation E squares i equal to 1 to n. So, e, e i squares. Okay. So, this is the error sum squares. So, which is equal to summations y minus alpha head minus beta head x and of course, there is a i also. So, now uh, i equal to 1 to n. So, this is also square. So, so error sum square is nothing but the difference between the actual y minus the expected y. So, the difference will give you the error. So, the if you will make it uh, squares, then you will get and it is uh, apply sum, then obviously, you will get the error sum squares. So, now through which you have to uh, uh, we have to we have to minimize the component. So, now let us the, this is the this is the starting procedure of this particular system. So, now our objective is here to get the alpha head and beta head that is why we have to minimize the error sum squares. So, now since we like to get the value of alpha head and beta head. So, we have to minimize the error sum squares with respect to alpha head and beta heads. Okay. So, now so uh, there are two system here. So, uh, how do we minimize the system? So, there are uh, you know uh, means this is typically optimization techniques. So, we have two different structure of optimization one is called as a minimization technique and uh, another is called as a maximization technique. So, now here uh, we, we, we are in the process of minimizations. Okay. So, uh, there are two standard rules to minimize the uh, is some squares. So, now here first uh, first uh, uh, you know step is to take d summation e square by d alpha head is equal to 0 and d summation e square by d beta head is equal to 0. Okay. So, now let us call it f 1 this is called as a f 1 and this is called as a f 2. Okay. So, now the first order this is this is otherwise known as first order necessary conditions. Okay. So, second order sufficient condition is that. So, now f 1 1 and f 1 2 f 2 1 uh, 2 1 and f 2 2 must be greater than 0 and f 1 1 greater than 0 and f 2 2 must be greater than 0. So, that means what is f f 1 1? So, f 1 1 is nothing but d summation e squares d square summation e square by d alpha head squares. So, f 2 2 is nothing but d square summation e square by d beta head squares. Okay. So, like this f 1 2 is nothing but d square summation e square by d alpha head and d beta heads. So, now we are not going to discuss detail about this particular mathematical setup. So, what we have to do? We can get this answer through only first order necessary conditions. So, now what we have to do? We have to just <coughs> minimize the sum square. So, what is what is a you know d summation e square by d alpha head? d summation e square by d alpha head is nothing but 2 into summations y minus alpha head minus beta head x. Okay. So, into with respect to alpha head. So, of course, then and there is a minus 1. So, now which must be equal to 0. So, now if you simplify uh, that implies which is nothing but summation y equal to n alpha head plus beta head summation x. Let us assume that this is equation number 1. Okay. So, now similarly we have to calculate d summation e square by d beta head. So, d summation square beta head is nothing but 2 summation y minus alpha heads minus beta head x okay, into with respect to beta head. So, obviously, minus x is the extra terms which has to be multiplied in systems. Okay. So, now this should be exactly equal to 0. So, now if we simplify again, so obviously this is equal to uh, summation y x y that implies summation x y equal to alpha head summation x okay, plus beta head summation x squares. All right. So, since equal to 0, so obviously uh, if we will uh, properly structure then uh, we will get summation x y equal to alpha head summation x plus <laughs> beta head 
summation x square. So, now let us call it equation number 2. Now, uh, so if we club these two equations, so that means uh, the system will be now, the system will be now uh, summation y equal to n alpha head plus beta head summation x and summation x y is equal to alpha head summation x plus beta head summation x squares. Okay. So, what is our objective here? Our objective is here to get alpha head uh, and to get beta heads. Okay. Forget about the second objective of error component. So, in the meantime, so we have derived these two equations just to know what is the exact value of alpha head and what is the exact value of beta heads. Okay. So, now uh, we, we, we have two uh, you know items to get and we have two equations. So, the system is a systematic one. So, that means, the system is a unique one. So, uh, it can be operated. So, what uh, we, uh, what we, uh, uh, I like to do here? So, I will put this uh, concept uh, into matrix format. So, this is nothing but y equal to simply uh, x beta simply called as a x beta. Okay. So, now what is x beta here? So, x beta uh, uh, x beta is nothing but uh, uh, you put it here like uh, where uh, where where uh, 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 y equal to summation y summation x y okay then uh, x equal to then x equal to uh, n summation x then summation x summation x squares okay then beta equal to then beta equal to uh, alpha head and beta heads okay alpha head beta head so that means the whole system will be represented as y equal to x beta only so now let us assume that this is equation number <laughs> 3 so now uh, if we we'll multiply now multiplying now multiplying x inverse on both the sides on both the sides okay multiplying x inverse on the both the sides so what what happens so now uh, x inverse y is equal to x inverse x into beta okay x inverse y equal to x inverse x beta okay so now what is x inverse x x inverse x by matrix algebra it is nothing but unit matrix okay it is nothing but unit matrix so as a result the value of matrix is exactly equal to 1 all right so that that implies beta equal to x inverse y beta equal to x inverse y so now the question is what is x inverse y so now we know what is x so, x is n summation x summation x summation x squares. Okay. So, we have to find out the x inverse. So, x inverse equal to adjunct of x divided by uh, divided by mod x okay. M mod x okay. W what is uh, if you put it in in, in uh, 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 different structures then x inverse x inverse is represented as a uh, summation x squares uh, minus summation x then minus summation x then n okay so this is what a x inverse divided by uh, mod a which is nothing but n summation x squares minus some x whole squares okay so this is the entire value of x inverse okay so there is a rule how to get the x inverse so i am not going detail about this explanations so you have to know yourself so the x inverse uh, uh, means if f is x is available and it is in square format then obviously we will get uh, we are able to manage to get the x inverse so now see the system is a 2 into 2 so it is a square matrix of order 2 into 2 so it is not a difficult to get the you can say inverse matrix so x inverse is a this much so now we like to know uh, x inverse y okay so now x inverse y x inverse y is nothing but so again we have to go for matrix multiplication summation x squares minus summation x minus summation x n divided by 1 n summation x square minus some x uh, whole squares 
uh, into into uh, y what is y y equal to some y some x y okay some y and some x y so now now uh, 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 now this is the x inverse y so now beta beta equal to x inverse y okay so what is beta beta is nothing but alpha hat and beta hat okay so now if we we'll simplify uh, uh, simplify this particular uh, uh, equation by matrix multiplication then we will get alpha hat equal to alpha hat equal to so we will get alpha hat equal to like this uh, this okay uh, this is alpha hat equal to uh, summation y uh, into summation x squares okay then uh, minus summation x into summation x y divided by a uh, n summation x squares minus sum x whole square this is the alpha head component okay this is the this is the alpha head component okay similarly we will get beta head beta head equal to um, beta head equal to uh, uh, n summation x y n summation x y minus uh, minus n summation x y minus uh, sum x uh, sum x uh, uh, sum x into sum y right into sum y okay divide by n summation x square minus sum x whole square okay so this is beta head component okay so now if we really, if we really simplify further then this particular item can be represented as you can say summation x y by summation x square. So, this x represent where x equal to x minus x bar and y equal to y minus y bar. I so, will explain how it is how it is transferred into this particular format. <laughs> so, the, the, there is a there is a trick to solve this particular uh, problems. Okay. So, now uh, since we have objective to get the alpha head and beta head, so now you are in a position to know the value of alpha head and to know the value of beta heads. Okay, so this is our starting point of you know uh, bivariate econometric modeling. The moment you get alpha head and beta head, then the game plan will be completely different uh, uh, now. So now the uh, uh, the idea is the basic idea for this particular bivariate econometric modeling is that we have to fit a best line okay otherwise it's called as a best fitted line so how do we get best fitted lines no, no, the best fitted line depends upon the value of alpha head and beta head so now the alpha head and beta head may may be <coughs> means it it cannot be it cannot be a constant or it cannot be unique it can be different uh, with respect to different setup or different structures because the moment we really get a particular uh, estimated equation y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x then obviously uh, that model has to be you can say uh, identify properly so that is what we call as a reliability of the models so the uh, the details uh, testing structure we have discussed long back uh, uh, in my f first uh, one or two lectures so now when will uh, when we have a uh, estimated model. So, we have to go first the reliability first or that is nothing but diagnostic check. So, now once you have that and if the model is free from this particular diagnostic check so or it is reliable one then you can use that model or you can say that this model is perfectly ok or best fitted model. If not then you have to modify uh, by various ways either a, a you can redesign the model or redesign the system redesign the data setup or redesign the technique so uh, by the way uh, you will get a particular mo models uh, at the end which one is the uh, best model for this particular analysis so now once you have alpha head and beta head so your estimated equation will be <laughs> y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x so, alpha head is followed by this one and beta head is followed by this one. <coughs> okay. So, now there is a actually tricks here. So, uh, when we uh, you know particularly exam point of view it is very difficult to go for uh, you know uh, so much derivation or analysis 
there is a trick how to get the solution very quickly. Okay. So, what is our starting point here? Our starting point is here summation y equal to n alpha hat plus beta hat summation x square okay. and summation x y is equal to uh, alpha hat summation x plus beta hat summation x square. So, this is how we have started our uh, journey. Okay. So, now I think this is okay, uh, alpha hat plus beta hat summation x square. Uh, 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 and uh, summation x y equal to alpha hat summation x plus beta hat summation x square sorry this is summation y equal to n alpha hat plus beta beta hat summation x and alpha uh, summation x y equal to alpha hat summation x and plus beta hat summation x square. So, what you have to do? So, now uh, let us take a first equation here. So, summation y equal to n alpha hat plus beta hat summation x. So, now what I will do? I will divide n both the sides. Okay. Summation y equal to n alpha hat by n plus beta hat summation x by n. Okay. So, summation y by n is nothing but y bar. Okay. This is what we have already discussed <coughs> detail <coughs> in the <coughs> univariate <coughs> data structures. So, now y, y bar equal to Oh, oh, n n cancel this is nothing but alpha head plus beta head x bars ok summation x by n is nothing but x bar so it will be x bar so now our objective is here to get the alpha head and beta head so now alpha head is only single element here so obviously alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head x bar so technically there is no point to uh, no point to uh, you derive the alpha head or uh, you have to run behind this alpha head value. Alpha head value we will get automatically because we know the y information and we know the x information. By the uh, by the help of y information and x information, we can get to know what is y bar and wh what is x bar. So, uh, so it is not a difficult task. So, what is the difficult task here? So, now here the unknown factor is beta head. So, once you will get the beta head, other things will be remain uh, available with you. So, as a result, so you have to calculate first beta head rather than alpha head. So, once you will get beta head with the help of beta head you can able to get the alpha head. So, what is beta head here? So, beta head equal to the formula we have already mentioned. So, beta head equal to n summation x y <coughs> minus sum x into sum y by n summation x square n sum x square minus sum x whole square. Okay. So, once you will get beta head then through which alpha head can be observed to which alpha head can be observed. Okay. So, now, so what we have to do here? Is, so, we like to take a case here. Okay. So, we like to know what is this, uh, 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 what is this entire structure, how do we get this alpha head and beta heads. So, before we go to particular example, so let me uh, highlight here this particular issue. So, this is otherwise called as a covariance of x y by sigma. <coughs> sigma x okay, or it is a variance of x, this is covariance of x. So, covariance x is, is nothing but some simply uh, summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar m, m, divided by n and variance of x is nothing but summation x minus x bar into x minus x bar divided by n and n cancels. So, obviously, this is nothing but sigma x and this is nothing but covariance of y. So, it is equal uh, sigma x means it is a square root. So, <coughs> so obviously, this is uh, this is ok all right. So, now alpha head is this much and beta head is this much. So, that means the other way you have to represent the beta is nothing but summation x y by summation uh, uh, you can say x square summation x square. So, uh, x is <coughs> x minus x bar y is y minus y bar x square is nothing but this particular item x minus x bar and summation x y is this much. So, if you simplify then you will get this particular equation. So, now we have alpha head and we have beta head. So, now we, we will see how practical it can be evaluated. So, take a, a example here. Okay. So, we take here x series okay. x series here then y series here. Okay. This is sample points. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. Okay. So, here so the sample points are 51, 60, then 65, 
then 71, then 39, then 32, then 81, then 76, then 66, then 66, then Y series is nothing but 187, then 210, then 137, then 136, then 241, then 262, then 110, 143 then 152. So, that means 1, for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 6, this is 7, 8, 9. <coughs> so, there are 9 sample points. So, this sample point is the 9. So, okay. so these are the uh, sample points and these are the x series and these are the y series. All right. Since uh, x has a 9 sample points and y has a 9 sample point, this the that means this system is okay now so the model can be estimated so now what is the uh, idea behind this model so we will assume that the model uh, or y and x are uh, relation uh, means y and x are related in a linear one <coughs> so our assumption that y equal to alpha plus beta x and if we will add the error term then obviously this is plus u so now we are assuming that the estimated model is equal to y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x okay and where alpha head equal to y minus <coughs> y bar minus beta head x bar and beta head is equal to n summation x y minus some x into some y divided by n summation x square minus some x whole square all right so now you see here uh, since we have a x and y series so what is the essential point here for x and y you see here this is nothing but we first need we first need mu x mu y okay we need mu x mu y and another is sigma x x sigma x y sigma y x and sigma y y okay so this is <laughs> this is mean of x this is mean of y <coughs> and this particular matrix is called as a variance covariance matrix variance covariance matrix all right so now within the given setup so you can able to get all these items separately so now to solve this particular equation so what is the essential requirement so <coughs> essential requirement is that essential requirement is that we like to know first what is the summation x okay then summation y then summation x y okay then summation x squares then summation y squares all right these are the requirements we like to know so what is summation x what is summation y what is summation x y what is summation x square what is summation y square and finally what is the sample size okay sample size so now uh, in fact, uh, uh, I have already calculated this particular uh, item. So, this is nothing but x series. <coughs> so, sum x equal to 541. I am just filling the gap. Summation y equal to 1578. Okay, 1578. Then summation xy is equal to 88291. Then summation x square is equal to 34705. And uh, y y is nothing but uh, <coughs> 298712. Uh, so, this summation x square is nothing but uh, 347, 347, 05, okay? and n is here 9, n is 9 here. Okay? So, now <coughs> we like to know alpha head, alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head x bar. Let us start with the first beta. So, beta head equal to n summation x y. So, n into 8 a n is 9 here. So, 9 into 8 8 2 9 1 minus summation x into summation y. So, 541 multiplied by 15 15 7 8 summation x into summation y divided by n summation x square. What is summation x square? It is 9 into 3 4 7 0 5 minus some x whole square. What is some x? Some x is 541. 
so 541 whole square so this is what the beta value <coughs> is all about so now if we simplify this particular uh, equation this particular equation then you will get you will get this particular equation is like this <coughs> so beta head is equal to 3.004 okay you will get 3.004 where uh, 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 where all these informations are available. So, if you will simplify this particular equation, so you will get beta head equal to 3.004. Okay. So, now alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head equal to 3.004 into <coughs> x bar. Okay. So, now if you will simplify further, then it is nothing but 355.93. Okay. So, that means your final equation will equal to <coughs> y head equal to 355.93 minus 355.93 minus 3.004 into x 3.4 into x ok. So, this is what the call as a estimated model. So, this is what we call is a estimated models ok. So, now what you have to do? So, we get to know uh, we just summarize what we have done till now ok. So, now uh, the starting point is G. So, we have we have y equal to alpha plus beta x plus u this is original format where <coughs> u is <coughs> error term this is slope and this is intercept, this is dependent variable, this is this particular item is independent variables all right and this is explained items and this particular is unexplained items ok. So, by this process we are assuming that y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x alpha head equal to alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head x bar and beta head equal to a summation x y by summation x square where x equal to x minus x bar oh, x equal to x minus x bar y equal to y minus y bar and <coughs> x y is nothing but x minus x bar into y minus y bar and x square is nothing but x minus x bar into y minus y bar ok. So, this is what we have received the final equation. So, that is called as a line of the best fitted. So, now you see here. So, the original structure is we start with the y and x only ok. By the way, we will get a you know u component here or you can say <coughs> error component here. So, this is a sample point so 1 2 3 up to 9 okay so for every items you must have a some observations some observations okay so now uh, how you have to set up this particular series so you have y and x means our, sta our original starting is with respect to y information and x information so we are assuming that y and x has a relationship and <coughs> by the way y y is a dependent variable and x is a independent variables. So, now uh, uh, we have to fit in such a way so that we will get a best you know fitted line or that is called as a best related equations. So, now the way you have to get that best related equation. So, we have to apply so many techniques. So, here we are we are using the ordinary least square method. So, so that we will get this best fitted uh, line. So, now, so that we will assume that it is nothing but y head. <coughs> so, <coughs> y head. So, <coughs> y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Okay. So, now you will get u here. So, this is y head structures because y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Alpha head is here, beta head is here. So, put this value here, then x is there. So, every for every sample x value is there. So, for every sample put x value here, so you will get the y head value, put x value 2 here, then obviously you will get y 2 heads. So, similarly up to y 9 head you will get it. 
So, now how do we get u? u is nothing but y minus u here. So, it will get quality u 1, e 2, e 3 up to e 9. So, these are all called as a error item. So, now we have to see what is the contribution of a, a error and what is the contribution of x towards the y. This is our basic agenda behind this particular <coughs> topic. Okay. So, now now uh, uh, there is certain problem here. So, what is this problem? So, now when will be fitting a model so y equal to alpha plus beta x plus uh, you know error terms and you will get y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. So, this particular transformations we have applied OLS technique. Okay. So, there may of course, there are several techniques we can uh, you can use to get this y head equal to alpha head and beta head x. Uh, but OLS technique is the uh, very standard technique and very easy to understand and simple to simplify. So, that is how we have to start with the OLS technique. So, when we will go deep in this particular econometric modeling, then we can apply maximum likelihood estimator techniques or generalized least care methods and weighted least care methods. So, some of the uh, problems under this econometric modeling can be solved with this particular you know methods that times OLS techniques may not be may not be appropriate to get the best fitted uh, best fitted line. So, there is a way how when or what times you have to apply the GLS technique or WS techniques or maximum like Lewis technique. So, here we start with first the basic level then we have to go uh, into <coughs> complex uh, uh, complex scenario. So, now uh, uh, here is uh, when we will apply OLS technique, then uh, the entire equation will be transferred into y, uh, y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. You know, OLS techniques, uh, of course, OLS technique is the standard technique and you know, easy to understand, uh, easy to apply, but it has certain limitations. So, there are, there are certain limitations with respect to its assumptions. So, uh, we have certain assumptions before applying the OLS technique or to get this estimated line and these assumption are you know a later po I mean say a later point of times it is problem for this particular econometry modeling and each problem has to be investigated problem. So, we will discuss detail what is the exact assumption and how this problem can be you can say generated in this particular systems. So, these problems are very very complex and very interesting also. <coughs> okay. So, now the system is uh, uh, means the idea is here what is the what are these assumptions related to OLS techniques because OLS techniques uh, without these assumptions OLS techniques cannot be applied and you cannot get the best fitted model. So, that is what we call is y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Yes, it is means theoretically we are just writing y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x but to get alpha head beta head is not so easy. There are lots of complex process or complex structure through which we have obtained the alpha and beta head. Just now, <laughs> we have derived the entire uh, <coughs> structure. So, uh, with respect to this particular alpha head value and beta head value. So, now, the way we are applying this well is, so we have to go with certain assumptions because uh, without such assumption it is very difficult to minimize this error sum squares that too by the help of OLS techniques. So, <coughs> these assumption <coughs> are actually divided into three parts. <coughs> One part is related to error term, another part is related to uh, independent variables and third part is related to dependent other um, other uh, 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 other items in a particular system there are certain other items means uh, that items related to statistics only not some other thing so now we will see what are these assumptions under this particular setup <coughs> so first first assumption is that the model must be linear in parameters model parameters model parameters are linear in natures, linear in natures. So, every time we are using y equal to alpha plus beta x <coughs> plus u. So, that, that means, this model is a linear one with respect to both you know variables and with both parameters. So, 
over the you know complex problems. So, this variable can be you can say nonlinear one and the parameter can be nonlinear one, but <coughs> so far as OLS technique is concerned, we have to assume that all, para all parameters should be linear in nature, but variables may be you can say may not be nonlinear uh, one. So, that means, uh, uh, we can apply like this you know let us say quadratic equation, cubic equation or logarithmic equation, it can be possible. That means, y can be log y, y can be y squares, x can be log x, x can be x squares or simply we can put y, y equal to like this, uh, we can put y equal to alpha plus beta x square. <coughs> beta x square plus you can say gamma gamma x we can also fit like this way and you will get the value of you can say alpha beta and the gamma it is not a difficult task but the standard assumption is that oh, 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 whatever model uh, means parameters you are using in this particular setup all parameters must be linear in nature and for the for bivariate model obviously there are <coughs> only two parameters in the system one is related to you know supporting component that is intercept and another is the slope commission that is indicated the weightage of the independent variable towards the dependent variables okay so this is first first assumption behind this particular <coughs> technique so model must be means model parameter must be linear one okay second x should be non stochastic x followed by non stochastic so, that means, oh, in fact, last class I have discussed uh, it should be random in nature. So, that means, uh, uh, there is uh, some kind of probability may be involved in this particular uh, process, because we are hoping that this is the expected relationship and expected equations or you can say uh, whatever may be the, since we are using the term expectation. So, that means, it is for future only because the whole idea behind this particular estimated model is to go for forecastings. Okay. So, what should be in the future? This is the original structure within the original setup we have to build a path through which we can predict or forecast the future one. So, that is how we are doing all these jobs. So, now so uh, means that is how we have to assume that the variables are very much non stochastic in nature otherwise it is very difficult to observe it or you can say plan it. So, now the, the second uh, second this is the second assumption behind this particular OLS technique third assumptions your <coughs> mean, mean of error term mean of error term mean of error term should be equal to 0 mean of error term should be equal to equal to 0. So, like this so that means uh, e upon u is equal to 0. So, this is <coughs> mean of error term should be equal to 0. That means, you see when we are considering mean then obviously, some item should be above and some item should be below. This is what we uh, we have learned from the standard univariate data setup. So, mean is the you can say average or uh, usually we consider is the middle must uh, divided into two equal parts which is you know some 50 percent above 50 percent below if that is the setup then obviously the entire system is more or less okay so now mean of the error term should be equal to zero so now when we will get y head then obviously to get the uh, to get error component e we uh, we have to subtract y minus you know y and y head so, now the difference is called as a error term. So, now we have series of items through which we will get y 1, y 1 heads x then y 2, y 2 heads. So, like this. <coughs> so, so, since y 1, y 2 up to y n then y head 1, y head 2 like this up to y head n. So, now for every items so there is a error component for say, uh, like u 1 for first component <coughs> and for say second component you must be 2 like this it will continue up to nth items. So, now since uh, we are discussing about the average then obviously, sometimes the difference may be positive sometimes the difference may be negative, but <coughs> at the end when we will go for summation the plus 
items and minus items should be equal and if that is the case then your system is the perfectly ok otherwise this system is some kind of error ok. <coughs> so, <coughs> this is third assumption behind this OLS technique. Then fourth assumption is that uh, variance of error terms, variance of error term should be constant, variance of error term should be constant ok, variance of error term should be constant ok, should be constant what is that. So, that means what is variance, uh, variance here, so now we are we are discussing here, <coughs> we are discussing here u ok, u is the error term. So, we are calling it the u i <coughs> ok. So, now we will take another error term u j ok. So, now so there are two variables in fact. So, now what is variance? So, we start with the covariance a, covariance equal to y i upon or u i upon u j. So, this is what it is called as a covariance of u i i j. So, now this covariance of u i e, u i u j can be equal to variance of u provided uh, e, e means if i equal to j. So, that means when we look, when we say uh, you know variance of error term should be constant or you can say unique then obviously covariance of u i upon u j should be equal to 1 for i equal to j and this particular setup is called as a homoscedacity. This is particular setup is called as <laughs> homoscedacity that means when there is a error, vari uh, error variance. So, that error variance should be very very equal like this. So, now when there are u, u is the error term. So, through one u you can create several u's like this. So, let us say in a more generalized format u 1, u 2 up to u n ok. So, this side u 1, u 2 up to u n. So, now we have the variance covariance matrix. So, this is u 1 1, this is u 1 2 and this is u 1 n. So, this is u 2 1, this is u 2 2, then this is u 2 n. So, this is u n 1, u n 2, this is u n n. So, that means, the complete structure is divided into three parts. This is a, this is a diagonal elements, this is off diagonal, on diagonal and this is <laughs> off diagonal. So, now, when will we say that variance of error terms are equal? That means, these are all variance and these are all covariance. So, now, this variance should be exactly similar. If this is the case, then this particular setup is called as a homoscedacity principle and OLS techniques assumes that the error variance are equal that means, there is a homoscedacity. If a the situation is reverse or that means, if the error variance are not equal it varies with respect to you know uh, some pulse points uh, either in the cross sectional or something time series then obviously, a, a, a it is in different format. So, that particular format is called as a heteroscedacity problem. So, we have two different Mm, game together, one is called as a homoscedacity, another is called as a heteroscedacity. So, homoscedacity is a very you know very consistent with the OLS technique. So, that means one of the standard assumption of OLS is that so error variance should be equal. So, that is what we call it a homoscedacity. If that is not the case, then it is called as a heteroscedacity. So, now when there is a heteroscedacity problems with the application of OLS that means, the model cannot be treated as a best fitted models. So, in that context we have to redesign the setup again. So, so that <coughs> the heteroscedacity problem can be removed then we will get the homoscedacity structures. So, then the model can be used for forecasting. With this we can uh, close this chapter today. So, next class we will start with the same uh, assumption of this particular bivariate modeling with the application of OLS technique. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.